face, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the starship Enterprise. Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. We're going to be talking about Mirror, Mirror, and a very important episode for, maybe for Deep Space Nine it's more important than it is for TOS, but it's a uh, well-regarded episode anyway. We're joined by Modi. Modi, how are you? I'm great. You ready to talk about uh, Mirror, Mirror? Are we in a Mirror universe at this point? The I've got my goatee on, so you know what's up, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I, I haven't shaved in a couple of days, so I'll consider that to be uh, the way forward. Yeah, I don't think they actually ever call it the Mirror universe in this do they? I don't think so. I think they just call it a parallel. They call it a parallel, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, this is Mirror Mirror. It's episode four of season two. It was directed by Mark Daniels, written by Jerome Bixby, and it aired back on October 6th, 1967. Uh, this is one that involves a transporter malfunction that swaps Captain Kirk and his companions with their evil counterparts in a parallel universe. In the so-called Mirror Universe, the Enterprise is a ship of a Terran Empire, an organization as evil as the Federation of Planets is benevolent. Pretty good summary. Anyway, I'm going to play an audio clip. Me and Modi are going to come back, and we're going to break down Mirror Mirror. What is this? Everything's all messed up, changed around, out of place. Captain, what's happened? Oh, not everything. That spot. I spilled acid there a year ago. Jim, what in blazes is it? I don't know. It's our enterprise. But it isn't. Maybe... Maybe what, Captain? Any of you feel dizzy when we were in the transporter beam? Yes. When we I, I, first materialized? I did. It happened twice. First, we were in our own transporter chamber, and then we faded. And then, when we finally materialized, we were here, wherever this is. Captain, the transporter chief mentioned a surge of power. The transporter lock might have been affected by the ion storm, and we just materialized somewhere else. Yes, here. Not our universe, not our ship, something parallel. Parallel universe, coexisting with ours on another dimensional plane. Everything's duplicated, almost. Another Enterprise, Spark with a beard. Another Captain Kirk, another Dr. McCoy, and An exchange. Another... If we're here, then our counterparts must have been transporting up at the exact same time. Similar storms on both universes disrupted the circuits. We're here and there on our enterprise. So Modi, I don't know if you, um, were you familiar with this episode or did you just know sort of the goatee cliche sort um, of meme? <laughs> Well, this was I said I said like during the very first uh, recordings that I watched a handful of episodes um, way back when of this just to you know get the tropes and that kind of thing and so I watched this one for sure a long time ago like maybe two years ago or so yeah yeah are you a fan of um, the community and stuff like that like uh, the, I don't I haven't paid much attention to it now okay yeah because they they always do the uh, the the goatee thing is kind of a running joke but the the goatee thing is kind of spawned off into something uh sort of oh like yeah a cultural, it's well-known meme yeah 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 cultural yeah, exactly. talking points and um it's really funny it's funny because it's only spock that has the goatee in this one yeah it should be everybody yeah. why isn't it everybody it's 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 uh it's absolutely not but anyway mirror mirror um famous episode uh well yeah. regarded episode good episode i'll i'll put that to you I don't know. I don't know if it actually is a good episode i mean it's an entertaining episode to, to say the least i guess it doesn't I think plot wise, it has the best, best, the hardest problems. I think for me, uh, it is an entertaining episode to watch. Though, I'll give it that. What uh, What's wrong with the plot in your in your estimation? Well, I mean, I just I just struggle with if this is a parallel universe. How do how do these people? I mean, it's the exact same crew. Like, how is it the exact same crew somehow is the same in both universes? Well, minus the woman who is the captain's woman, I guess. Right. But she shows up at the end, too. She's there as well. How she, did all of these people somehow rise to the same tier, which is, you know, top tier ship within the fleet on both planets, on both, on both, on both dimensions? It doesn't it doesn't hold up for me. It doesn't, <laughs> doesn't stick to landing. I think that, no. well, I mean, it's, it's obviously one of many universes, right? So this one is 
um i guess it's kind of a like a shooting fish in a barrel thing like this is the one that they hit i suppose would be the argument that like out of all the universes they found um and interestingly in the episode they never actually say that there's like a problem finding which universe they're in which i would think would be a major problem that spot well, yeah. have to fix um doesn't make a lot of sense no yeah they never they never do that but the the i don't know is there a line from the mirror version of the woman who's new in this episode does she has a, have a line where she's like i just got posted to the ship at some point because yeah says, basically yeah that's it she says she that, got here like a week ago she says that in the mirror universe as well because she, no, she says it i don't know if she says it in the mirror universe but she says it in the the real universe right so i'm i, but I, I she don't never know. mentioned it in the mirror universe yeah i don't know if she um if she had said it in the mirror universe it would make a little bit more sense and i would consider the crews to be matching but you you get a weird because everyone has the same exact role exact except for her that's yeah she's, they all have a counterpart in the other universe and it doesn't make a lot of sense that, that would happen yeah especially in the in the mirror universe they refer to bones as being kind of a more emotional person and more of a weak person how would that happen like right. in a world like this where assassination is the way you advance like how would he advance you know what i mean right yeah yeah so I guess the the sort of generic description is the mirror universe is basically like a barbarian version, like a terrible version of um, the Federation, like our current like understanding what the, you know, our universe is where uh, people become promoted by killing their superiors. So there's like a lot of assassination. They do things, uh, they torture each other. They have things called agonizers and agony booths where they can torture uh, lesser officers who like fail to do things. And Mm -hmm. everyone is basically a little bit grumpier. Um, (laughs) It's grumpier. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. More (laughs) scarred also. Yeah, more scarred. And so, you know, what I think a good thing that they did in this episode is that you don't spend a lot of time with the mirror universe people in the regular universe. You see, I think you only really have one scene. No, just one scene. Yeah. Yeah. One, one flat, one cutaway, one flashback or something like that. Like where you see them getting all locked up immediately. Yeah. Basically they explained that the end too pretty well. I like, I like their explanation for why they were able to identify them so quickly. You're right. You're right. Just because they, it's, it's harder for barbarians to pretend to be civilized than it is for civilized people to be barbarians. So yeah, I, I, I like that. Did you like that? Or would you have rather have seen more of the, uh, barbarian mirror universe people in our no, I universe didn't, i didn't i didn't need much more from them i think i think it served its purpose and i did like that they were and i like the reasoning i like the rationale of why they got caught immediately and they just lock them up yeah i don't i don't get why the the they would have transported places at the end i feel like they would need to get them to the teleporter somehow at the right moment oh that's to, true uh, coordinate this thing somehow they just teleport them back because the you know energy displaced them somehow i don't know but it didn't make a lot of sense to me. Why, why, why aren't they existing in both universes? Right, right, but, right. And yeah, Spock, or, doesn't, yeah. Spock doesn't move them back at the end. Does, no, does they, just, they just figure? teleport. He, he says, I assume they went back with... It's like, oh, you assume so? Okay, oh, great. No. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Maybe we should check the book, check the brig quick, and make sure they're not it's still there. I'm glad I'm glad they didn't, because I think it would have been a chance for Shatner to like just sort of ruin the episode by playing that crazy <laughs> character. And no one else has a line, I don't think. None of the other mirror no, people they can't have. give him too much, yeah. yeah. They really can't give Shatner too much there so I mean this is it's like a highly regarded episode it went on to spawn a lot of Deep Space Nine not a lot but it went on to spawn a couple of Deep Space Nine episodes I think they go to the Mirror Universe and Enterprise as well so it's kind of a recurring Hmm. um, story that they're going to go back to the I mean I think it's it's interesting and just sort of how obvious it is like the <laughs> you, you, yeah it's not particularly symbolic or anything like no. there's, there's nothing clever going on between the two universes it's this is just a bad universe where the humans have sort of conquered the galaxy and are like enslaving other races and stuff like that if it was clever so like you're you familiar with the concept the movie uh sliding doors of like there's one moment that changes a course of events it's kind of like butterfly effect oh kind right of thing. sure sure What's what's the thing that made these two universes change? Split. Like, what's yeah. the difference? What's the thing that happened in this other universe that didn't happen in the other one of the universes? You know? Well, yeah, I what's don't the know. What's the thing that set them apart? I don't know what it would be. I do think that, like, Clay had... Uh, Clay, the other co-host who does a mm-hmm. lot of these episodes, had, um, he did a cover for a Star Trek comic. And the premise of that was that instead of first contact with the Vulcans, uh, first contact was made with the Romulans. And, oh. and it, like it changed the whole you know sort of li- like the uh progression of how the federation came about and stuff i could see something like that happening that would work yeah, yeah to this mirror that, if that's their impression of the universe and that's the first species they encounter they're going to change their strategies and 
tactics and all that. That right. makes sense. Become more I aggressive like and everything like that. And I, yeah. I, I think that would work. I mean, I think that the the more time you spend in the mirror, mirror universe, it's kind of one of those things that the more time you spend there, it probably makes less sense. Like how yeah, it can actually no, for sure. function as when a, you find out that that Kirk's like ambitions that the uh, the the, his, the captain's woman projects upon him is to become Caesar somehow. Right. It is like okay, this isn't holding up for me anymore at this point. Stop talking so much, please. Right. Yeah. Go talk about the Caesar of Earth, okay? And it's it's not even like there's a it's sort of gang warfare because it's not like they have like an honor system where they'll duel each other to the death. They basically have like no, their underlings. There's no honor whatsoever. Yeah. Their underlings like attack Kirk and stuff like that. So I, I, I don't think that it's like the more time you'd spend there, you'd sort of, it kind of reminded me of like how we wondered how the Klingon society functions when they're basically killing each other all the time over mm-hmm. like slights of honor. Like how would, how would this empire actually function if the whole way to get ahead is to kill everyone who's ahead of you and get there um it it just seems like it's the kind of thing it's like a neat idea but you couldn't actually base a lot of time in there because it would stop making sense uh the only i think that the cleverest thing well do i want to go to that first or do i want to talk to well i think that the the mirror universe is like an interesting obvious idea that i enjoy the episode when i spend time with it and i enjoy the the concept of them going back and everything like that i don't think that it's particularly like insightful or even like i don't even find the mirror universe to be that all that interesting um it's kind of the it's the weird thing where you see the sets and they really just have put like a new sticker on the door <laughs> and they gave everybody a sash and stuff like that and that's the oh yeah i mean kirk's them. outfit is amazing here yes the outf- the outfits are excellent and uh uhura nichelle uh nichols yeah. jesus her, her her body she's been doing uh sit-ups for years before this apparently just waiting for this moment to come out i, I think that <laughs> I mean, I think that the whole episode kind of hinges on, and what I think is the most interesting part of it, is Spock, right? Yes, that's the most interesting thing about this in the in the alternate universe that that Kirk basically says you are the guy that can change things around here because of your temperament and your rationale here. Uh, you can bring sense to this universe, and some like I, I I just find it odd that that Kirk cares so much about this parallel dimension, right? Like yeah. he's not willing to kill what what the the split planet. He's not willing to let the planet be destroyed. Uh, what are they called? The Hulk and the, the Council. Uh, the Hulkin. They're not yeah. allowed. They're not. He's concerned about killing the Hulkins in the alternate universe. Right. Like he's he's concerned about the the progress they're gonna make once he leaves. When he really if, once once they leave and the real Kirk comes back, the Hulkins are gonna get destroyed no matter what they decide to do here. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter. I think. I mean. I, well, I think I kind of. What's interesting about the Hulkins, right, is that I kind of. The universe isn't like. I think it's the title. I think the title Mirror Universe makes it sound like everything is kind of the opposite, but it really isn't because the yeah, Hulk, it's not. It's the just the Enterprise. Yeah, it's or just the, the Enterprise is different because Hawkins are exactly the same and they're sort of they're peaceniks mm-hmm. in both universes. Um, so I, I always tend to get confused about it in that way when I think about the episode because it's not really a reversal. It doesn't make a lot of sense. No, it doesn't make a lot of so sense. So whatever, whatever the sliding doors thing was has to happen only affected uh, the Federation. Then yes, it didn't affect anything else in the plant in the in the world. Right. Basically, it, <laughs> somehow the yeah the largest like entity in the universe didn't change what actually happened in the universe and stuff. I do think that I do want to talk about um Spock how would the episode ends? I think that the reason Spock is interesting to me is because he's, he's not really all that different in either universe from each other. No. Like he's, he's the same. And I think that's the most clever aspect of it is that he is kind of the rational Vulcan in both universes and it works well in both universes mm-hmm. for him to get by, which is probably the show, um, patting itself on the back about how, what it regards to be mm-hmm. like rational thought and everything like that. But he's, He's violent in the mirror universe, right? But he's not. Yes. He's not uncalled for. He's not like, um, like Bizarro Kirk is kind of like crazed when you see him. Like he's yelling and like sort of being like, oh, I'll get you and I'll get me out of here and stuff like that. Spock is the same character uh, with a goatee. And why do you think they gave him a goatee? I guess would be a question. I don't know. That's so weird that there was like the one thing. He, that's the only thing that's different about him, really. I mean, uh, and like you say, he he does. He, my my thought about it is that he has the exact same ethics in both universes. He plays by each universe's rules, mm-hmm. 
but he he still follows the same logic and morals in both. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like he's 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 playing by whatever universe he ends up in. He's playing by their rules still. Yes. Uh, but he yeah. he applies his own logic to it. But yeah, the, the the reason for the goatee, I don't understand quite what. Again, it's it's one of those sliding doors things. There's only two things that change this universe: something that happened on Earth that caused the Federation to go crazy, and something that happened with Spock in his life that decided to make him get a goatee. <laughs> those are the only two changes that have happened. Some horrible uh, chin acne or an oily T zone. Yeah, no, he got like a scar or someplace. He's covering up the scar with the the goatee, maybe, or some some girlfriend told him to look good in one universe and didn't tell him the other other universe. <laughs> do you think? Do you think they gave it to him because his character is so? Sick? similar that they had to distinct i mean he's wearing a different uniform well they they gave it to him because it's the first it's the first thing you see that you recognize in both universes oh, that, so you yes, see yeah. spock and you say okay this universe is different right and it's, it's the first thing you see so that's why they had to make him look different I beyond see, just I the see. uniform being that because the uniforms aren't that dissimilar for spock compared to kirk i mean it's way different but um and uhura and that kind of thing but for Spock's character, the uniform is not that different, but it's it's he's the very first character you see in the alternate universe, basically. That makes sense. Um, yeah, that, that clues you into what's going on. Do you, do you think that the? I mean, I like the I like the Spock storyline just because it's um, of how his character can sort of be plugged in and he makes sense in both universes. Did you? Mm-hmm. It, it ties in what you were saying about Kirk caring about the mirror universe. It. I, I don't get I, it. I think I have a problem with how it ends and what what Kirk thinks the Spock can actually do in this yeah. universe to change things. And <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. He's just going to get murdered by somebody below him. He, one of his science officers is going to kill him in the next scene, probably. Yeah, I mean, anytime you put someone out there like that, you're putting them at, at great risk, I think. You know? Well, then again, he has the, he has the device. Like, Kirk basically gives over that, that whatever you call tantalizer uh, that, that will let him, you know, do whatever he wants with it. Oh, right. Uh, and he just has to have the, the willingness to use it. Tantalus, is that, that's what it's called. Is that, that's, such a, uh, that's such a deus ex machina device. What a yeah, weird... No, it is. And so, and so yeah, that's the thing too. Kirk has this device in one universe, doesn't have it in the other universe. Again, there's there, okay now. There's three things that have changed between the three universe, the two universes here. And, and we start narrowing it down to what happened. How can anyone stop him in the mirror universe if basically the machine just if you look at somebody on the machine, you can just basically disintegrate them into nothingness. Like, you can see exactly what they're doing behind your back and also kill them for it. Yeah, <laughs> All right. I think that the. Why is Spock looking at the camera in the Tantalus Field thing too? Yes, like he it's yeah. like he knows it's there. <laughs> I thought he was. Um, I thought he was going to talk to him. And it, what's funny about yeah. that scene is also when w- they show the close up of the camera and Spock is looking at the camera very oddly. Yeah. And when they cut without back, blinking, without just staring at it, when they, when they push back to show Kirk and the woman who I can't remember her name, but I will look it up when they're standing. It's clearly uh, find it. it's clearly an extra in the Spock um, chair, which is funny. They couldn't just shoot Leonard Nimoy sitting there for some reason. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why they changed it somehow. Marlena. Marlena. She's Marlena. Marlena. She, what'd you think of Marlena? She was an interesting character, actually. She's, again, it's the two most interesting characters in this world are her and, and Spock. They, they actually have the most uh, divergence from the, the rules of the universe, basically. Yes, yeah. Um, they try to fight it the most, and she's, She's an interesting character in herself with with like the amount of lore she drops on us as far as like the rules of being a captain's woman yes. and the rank associated with that. It's it's very fascinating stuff. Do you, I mean I understand why she why she's there. I feel a little bit it it always feels a little bit to me just like they're like, well, you know, Kirk has got to have some kind of love interest in these episodes and, it, and like she feels always. like she's stuck in in that regard for some reason. Like but then he goes talks to her in the real universe, he which does, is creepy. Yeah. He does. So creepy. <laughs> he knows her. I think we're going to be friends. Oh, God, that's so bad, dude. He, I think the problem with her is that she is necessary because she's the way that they escape at the very end. Mm-hmm. I mean, if not yeah. necessary, she's sort of the, she's the linchpin that holds everything together. Well, and, and Spock, I mean, the, they both make a choice. I mean, Spock right. makes a yep. choice to to believe Kirk and 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 help Kirk and... Uh, and so does she. Yeah. So and and they they make a point of saying that those people can't come with them to their universe, which is um, an interesting decision. I think that they even broach the fact that uh, people would want to go back. Um, I guess yeah. with the way that those characters are written, that they kind of have to put them in that that position. But 
it's strange. He's like, well, we, we've already got four. I, I love that scene <laughs> yeah, because he's well, like, we've got four. And one of them says, like, there's only three of you. And he says, someone's coming. <laughs> and that's basically. <laughs> no, we got another guy. We got to hold the table for us. We got another guy coming. I mean, so so you enjoyed the uh, the Marlena storyline. Do you think it added a lot to the Mirror Universe? Or do you think it was just you just enjoyed the sort I'd of like, I like the lore that she added for sure okay. um, of the the idea of Captain's Women in this plant, in this universe and uh, all that. Um the, the payoff in the real world was creepy as hell. Right. But the, 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 the lore building in the other universe and her kind of uh, plotting behind his back it, it or pl- plotting with him to overthrow everyone. Like, she she provides a lot of... Um, she reads a lot in of, into what Kirk's saying and he doesn't have to say a lot then. Yeah. Because she's, like, thinks him to be something that he's not. So she's, she's providing a lot of his detail without him saying anything which is great for shatner to not have to say anything which is good yeah i i think that um you know they they have the line that we mentioned earlier about like it's easier to make the barbarian or harder to make barbarian seem like civilized i'm always a little bit surprised that no one thought that kirk was acting differently and no one really brings it up to him because yeah he seems like a raving lunatic in the other world uh and here he's right kirk yeah. Yeah, how did he how did he not like just start like salivating and drooling all over everything like uh, when they first like he's not he's not he's not punching the wall right now how is how is what is this new Kirk that's thinking for a second before he says something and Shatner is never required to ham it up as that no, role like he never really. has to do anything everyone seems to believe him um, and like so he just to, he just plays it well for like a con man kind of thing where he just lets them do the do the projection and right. just kind of just plays off of them and just tries to just act like a you know, just a little bit above where he's supposed to be and try to meet a little road without committing to anything. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like that. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, the mirror universe is, I, I mean, I, it's got problems it, for sure. It's got problems. I think it's like, why do you think the episode's iconic? I guess would be the question. Oh boy. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of good, like just moments in it. I think is the, the thing and maybe it's a, maybe it's just the camp of it that's that's so attractive i don't maybe, know but, yeah. Yeah. um yeah i'm not exactly sure i was thinking of the the best i mean this this episode uh plot wise i have so many so many problems with but it's like just entertainment wise it works so well it's very it's a very fun episode to watch actually yeah it's i, I agree that it is fun to watch i think that it's um it's probably more violent than a lot of TOS episodes are. Like oh, the, yeah. the idea of the agonizer and the agony booth is basically just oh, like yeah. torture that you're watching. Um, I I think it's iconic just because, well, it would obviously go on. I think it's a kind of thing that like writers would enjoy writing about, like having this sort of weird universe. Oh, yeah. and, everything. and I mean, I'm sure the actors too, getting a chance to do something different, like, right. uh, uh, Zulu's character and all that stuff. It's like it, it, they got, they got something to do for something different for once, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Outside of that, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think that it holds together sort of well. Um, the, I think everything that I, I enjoy the fact that they don't uh, leave the mirror universe in terms of narrative very frequently. I think that was a smart decision, um, and I think that you know it's just kind of a, I don't know. It's just, it's just kind of one of those things. Like when when the characters are wearing different uniforms and the bridge looks a little bit different, it kind of sticks in your mind for some reason. Like that mm-hmm. always seems to be a big important thing. I guess after you've watched you know 32 episodes of it or whatever the little differences yeah. like that kind of matter yeah interesting did you uh did you want to bring up what, what you thought was like a pro- plot point or uh we can well the main the main difficulty i have with this is, is i thought it was just kirk that had the problem of caring about this universe too much like he cares about the hulkins he cares about the crew he cares about everything that happens in this universe after he leaves right when yeah. really they're going to transport places back to each other and nothing's going to have changed anything he's done here is totally you know like I said, uh, the new the the uh, the 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 uh, B universe is Kirk's going to come back and kill Spock for having thoughts. You know what I mean? Like right, it's, it's right. going to just end badly for everyone. Uh, Marlena is dead. Like, like as soon as the transfer hits the uh, other other team back, like those those things change. And the fact like McCoy also falls in the trap of caring about the alternate Spock. Like why are you staying behind, risking your life to try to save this person? Right when. You're gonna leave, and this this other dimension you are never going to hear from again. There's no way to contact this dimension to find out what happened. Why do you care so much? Yeah, just get yeah. It, get yourselves home. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that I think that's good, and it's also kind of interesting that um, I mean, the bigger point there, I guess, is that they they think that the ethics kind of transcend the universes, which it's I, shocking though. Like how 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 often does that come up on the show? Where the way they they I mean, we have the other episode we're going to talk about today is is an example of that. Like the ethics of that are. 
uh, questionable. Right. Um, and this, this, why, it's just it's just odd to me that they care about this alternate universe so much. And not, yeah. You yeah. Know, realize that it's it's a it's gonna it's doomed from the start. Without, right. You know. <laughs> they might as well just try to uh, with, with or without them, it's doomed. So why why are you bothering? Yeah. Yeah. I to think, risk I your think lives to sense. save fake Spock. I don't know. Yeah, I guess the uh, before we go out, I will say that uh, it probably has one of the better fight scenes in it. I think the four four versus Spock was amazing. It's I loved a, that fight scene. It's yeah. a good fight scene. Although the that was great. The thing that he hits him over the head with, and then McCoy is like, "This man is going to die." It, it shatters a little. It's like a vase, basically. It's not heavy enough for me to it think. It looked that like he, a skull or something like that to me. Yeah, I don't know. He he hits him, and then McCoy's thing is just like, "If I don't help this man, he's going to die." And it's like, really? He just he kind of hit him with a, a some. Kind yeah, of he's like, kind of knocked out. I've seen people take worse blows than that on the show. <laughs> that all some, the time, basically. Yeah, some of the blows in that fight scene were worse than the thing that happens to knock Spock out but I do like that fight scene um, even though the extras are incredibly obvious when the, the camera zooms mm-hmm. out to a distance but yeah the four oh, yeah. four on one uh, fight scene is pretty effective I think in my mind alright I think we've talked about mirror mirror on the wall uh, we're going to play an audio clip me and Modi are going to come back and give our final thoughts and feelings and ratings for mirror mirror please restrict your movements captain What are you doing? Are you going to shoot me now, Spock? I thought I had it until dawn. I shall make that decision. Since you returned from the planet, you've behaved in a most atypical and illogical manner. I want to know why. Shoot, you're wasting time. I shall not waste time with you. You're too inflexible, too disciplined once you've made up your mind. But Dr. McCoy has a plenitude of human weaknesses. Sentimental, soft. You may not tell me what I want to know, but he will. You're running a big risk, Spock. I have the phaser, Captain. And I do not intend to simply disappear as so many of your opponents have in the past. All right. Mirror, mirror. It's one of those iconic episodes. People will probably be interested in hearing our thoughts about mirror, mirror, which which is um, (laughs) a good thing, I think. Modi, what do you think about uh, this episode? And what are you going to rate I, it I on think, our scale? I think plot problems aside that I have with just the the way the characters care about the alternate universe in general, uh, I'm still going to give it a four because it's, like I said, it's damn entertaining to watch. And that goes a long way for me for for shows. Uh, I don't know what it is. Like I said, maybe it's the camp of it. Um, the the goatee of Spock maybe is what's doing it for me. I don't know. I'm gonna be giving it a four, though, for sure. <laughs> I'm going to give it a four as well. I think it's, I think it's good. I think it's... Um, it's one of those episodes that there's not really a lot going on with it. Like it's, it's very simple. Um, and it's not even like we, we were making fun of the, the sort of understanding of like why Kirk is trying to help, uh, the mirror universe. It feels like that's just kind of thrown in to make it fit with how Star Trek ends their episodes more than it actually belongs there. It gives them more complication to deal with than besides just getting home, which they solve relatively quickly off yes, camera. Like yes, yeah. Most of the work being done to get home is is people off camera. Right. Scotty's doing something in engineering yeah. and they, that manages to work. Yeah, I think it's just like it, it feels like they kind of jam that in there to make you think about something, give you five minutes of extra dialogue that they can have with Spock and everything like that. But it doesn't really amount to much of anything. They needed a reason for them to care about the Hulkins. Like the Hulkins crystals whatever they're protecting or the means to get home or something like that some oh, reason right. that they beyond just pure like save these people some other reason for them to care about saving them to convince these people to save them for some reason right because the hulkins are the entire reason that kirk becomes under suspicion because he has he does the things that no one that he would never do before where he like grants them right. let's stay or whatever and says i'll come back to you in 12 and hours if he's, if he's trying to blend in it doesn't make any sense that right he would bother doing that yeah right, <laughs> right. yeah and that's yeah, I'm just trying to think if I was transported into a mirror universe and I had to, like, would I treat those people as real or would I treat them as like a holodeck sort of reality where it's like, well, it doesn't matter if that person dies. I guess Kirk is of the opinion yeah. that it all does matter. It does matter still to some, somehow. For some reason, it still does. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. We're both going to give it a four. I think it's a good, solid episode. I think it's enjoyable. I think it's a reason it's a classic. It's uh, memorable, if nothing else. And the ap- episode mm-hmm. actually holds up pretty well um, in terms of it watchability. Does. Modi, thank you very much for coming on to talk about it. Anytime. You are going to be back with a private little war, which was the... It's going to be fun. The one you foreshadowed, yeah, a few minutes yeah. ago. 
but yeah, private little war. Uh, if you guys are on YouTube and you enjoyed the content, a like or a comment, appreciate it. If you're on iTunes or any other podcatcher, you could write us on there. We'd appreciate it. Facebook.com slash the Penske podcast, and then Patreon.com slash the Penske podcast. Go to Patreon. You give a couple dollars a month and you get extra content. We talked about Ex Machina. Well, this might be out of date, but we did talk about Ex Machina and Suicide Squad in the recent month. And you can go there to get those podcasts. It's all very, very good. Mirror, mirror, moving along through season two of uh, TOS. We're going to be coming, what the hell's the one after this? Oh, Doomsday Machine is the episode coming up right after this. But Modi will be back in a couple of weeks with uh, a private little war. Modi, thanks again. Anytime. And I will see you guys later.